All right, we're gonna jump in with some more Inktober stuff and continue to explore um, patching and cross patching. We're gonna bring one concept over here and that's the value scale from our first video. Um, and we're gonna get into uh, planes and line direction. So hopefully you already know how to draw planes. If you don't, it would be worth reviewing it. And I've got plenty of videos on the channel just about drawing planes and basic forms. And I'd, I think it's always a good idea just to continue to refresh on, on that. So I'm gonna set up a couple of planes and talk about um, ways to differentiate them. I think that's the one of the basic concepts in you know, drawing almost anything is we're just trying to make one thing look different from another. And sometimes we make it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, so I'm gonna create three planes and use that as a way to just explore some ideas about hatching. We can actually put hatching going all the same direction across all of these planes and maybe just modifying modifying the, the directions just a hair to be sure that we're kind of going in perspective with the planes. So, you know, our angle is shifting slightly, but for the most part, we're just going in one direction. And we can go in there and, and we can bump up the line weight kind of between planes and, you know, use line to differentiate these. And this is something to really keep in your back pocket because sometimes you actually don't want to differentiate the planes that much. If you just want the overall shape of something, to be recognizable, and it's all kind of in shadow and in sort of a muted section of your piece, then you may just want to do this. Now what I'm going to do is start with one direction, shift directions, and then go back. So this is another way to think about it. So what's actually happening here is that I'm not actually changing value. I'm just using one component of the hatching, and that is the direction that I'm hatching. And what I'm doing is I'm following the form, but I'm changing the overall direction with which I followed that form. Okay, So I followed it going up and now I'm following it going back. I call these form following marks. You can also do um, more or less arbitrary marks. So if I pull out another one of these, if I just wanted to sync all of this, you know, into a tone, I could just randomly hatch across this thing and, you know, not really care about whether these marks have anything to do with the planes that they um, adhere to. And that's fine. That's, a, that's another sort of like look to keep in your back pocket. You know, Glenn Vilp used to say there's like no rules, just tools, right? And in a way, that's kind of true. There are some things that you do want to do and don't want to do here and there. But for the most part, what I'm trying to give you is options, right? So I think one of the strongest, um, you know, potential options you could have is to um, differentiate with, um, you know, leaving one blank, right? So we'll leave that one open and then we'll go sort of vertically here and we'll hatch here. And then we'll go back in space along this line. Okay. So these are still describing forms, but now what we've done is we've actually added a, a value. So we've gone to like our white value here, and then we have sort of our tone here. And if we squint at it, we can see it's a distinct value. Now, if I take, um, this particular layer, right? I lasso this guy and copy him out and move him over on top of this. I've already done most of my work here. So I can actually then think about shifting the value as well. So I can go in there and I can create my core tone by jumping in and doing some cross-hatching. Then 
then I can use a little line weight, go over it a few times to bump up the line weight here. And if I want to, I can actually suggest, you know, strong transitions of core tone along the top area and get a little bit of reflected light, or a little bit of a fade through it. So another thing that I can do to differentiate is I can go uh, trace the um, I can go ahead and, and trace the direction of these planes by kind of bending around these planes and not going backwards back in space, right? So now what I'm doing is I'm evolving line direction as it's described this way and not going back in space. Okay. So I think this is pretty much all of the options that you could potentially have um, to differentiate these particular three flat planes, right? Or to not differentiate. And I think um, that's something just to be, again, to be aware of before we get into form. Um, so this should help you out um, significantly when you just begin hatching, trying out these exercises and combining this with planes that you already know how to do. So from here, we're gonna take it into uh, some more stuff about the basic forms and the options that you have about um, uh, hatching on basic forms. And then we're gonna get into more advanced stuff from there.